organic compounds the substances available from plants and animals that is from the living organisms they are considered to be organic compounds and the substances which are available from the crust of the earth from the environment condition other than from the plants and animals they are inorganic whereas if obtained from the living organisms then they are organic compounds the organic compounds basically they are made up of hydrocarbons that means they necessarily contain carbon and hydrogen they also may contain some other elements like nitrogen oxygen sulfur halogens like fluorine chlorine bromine iodine etc all these things might be present in organic compounds it is the presence of these types of compounds which decide that what type of organic compound it is and that is the functional group the atom or the group of atoms which are responsible for the chemical reactions the chemical properties of the organic compounds those group of atoms or the atoms are considered to be the functional groups in organic compounds in addition to the carbon and hydrogen some functional groups which might contain oxygen nitrogen sulfur and halogens that might be present not only this alkene and alkynes you know that they are more reactive as compared to their respective alkene that means ethene is more reactive than ethane or else ethene is also more reactive than ethane in the same way alkanes don't have any functional groups for causing reactions and they are saturated one different organic compounds contain different functional groups and if they contain different functional groups obviously their chemical properties their physical properties will also be different for example the ethanol and ethanoic acid that is the second member that is in relation to the second member of alkene group that is ethane but the physical properties the chemical properties of both ethanol and ethanoic acid are completely different than that of ethane that means it all depends on the type of the functional group which is contained in that particular organic compound some of the examples of the functional groups that we can list out is carboxylic group that is c o o h one of the examples of that is acetic acid or else it is also known as ethanoic acid second member of the carboxylic group ketone group that is c double bond o one of the examples that we can give is of propanone that is ch3 co ch3 also known as acetone we shall discuss about this little bit later on in the same topic aldehyde is the next group that is cho and hcho that is either called as formic acid or else methanol the same substance hcho and the member of aldehyde group hydroxyl group the interesting one that is oh also known as alcohol group the formula that has been written down over here is that of ethanol that is ethyl alcohol c2h5oh or else ch3 ch2oh halogen group normally represented as x but instead of x we can have f we can have b cl we can have br or we can have iodine that means instead of x we can have fluorine we can have chlorine we can have bromine or we can have iodine then any of the functional groups is attached for example ch3 cl that is chloromethane or methyl chloride ester group that is coo the r over here represents the alkyl group but ester group is coo for example ch3 coo ch3 and the name of this compound is methyl acetate instead of ch3 in the next one it can have c2h5 also then that could be ethyl acetate so it all depends on the functional group there are some functional groups which contain oxygen and some of the examples of them are alcohol group that is also hydroxyl group that is oh ketone group that is c double bond o 
Then carboxylic group C O O H. Also ester group C O O, and you know that R stands for the alkyl group. Ether group that is simply O, and both the sides it is bonded by some other compound or some other molecules. So these are some of the examples of the functional groups which contain oxygen. Now before we move on to the main part of the chapter, I would personally prefer that we should move on to the nomenclature or else how should we remember the names of these substances. For that, first of all, we should be remembering all the names of alkane group and their alkyl corresponding alkyl group. Here we are concerned with the first four members and that is why we are going to discuss about only the first four members. The names of all the substances of alkane ends with A and E, whereas the same name would end with YL. So in place of A and E, we shall substitute YL. For example, methane, that will be written as methyl, whereas ethane will be written as ethyl. Obviously, same way, propane, what do you think that should be? Propyl. And butane should become butyl. Now we know the molecular formula of all the alkane series, CN, H, 2N, plus 2. And what we do is, we get rid of one of the hydrogens of that. And in place of that, we simply write down the alkyl group. That is CN, H, 2N, plus 2, where N is greater than or equal to 1. That is the general formula of alkane. Then for alkyl, that is going to be CN, H, 2N, plus 1. But remember, alkyl is a group. It is not the name of a compound and therefore it is very much necessary to represent a bond in front of the alkyl group. For example, if it is methane, CH4, what is that we are supposed to do? We are supposed to get rid of one H. What is left? CH3. So that is methyl group. See, it is so simple. Same way ethane, it is C2H6 and therefore that is going to give us C2H5 with a bond in front of that, so that is ethyl group. Now propane, if it is C3H8, what should be propyl C3H7? Same way C4H10 would become C4H9. Same way if it is pentane, C5H12. Think about the alkyl group on your own. So this is how we remember the names of alkyls from the alkane. Exactly the same way. Now let us try to remember about the names of the alcohol. Again, with respect to the same thing that is from alkane. Here, the suffix E, that is the letter E, is replaced by the letter OL. For example, methane would become methanol. Ethane would become ethanol. Propane becomes propanol. Butane becomes obviously butanol. Pentane would become Pentanol, you know that, isn't it? What is the general formula of alkane? CN, H2N plus 2, where N is greater than or equal to 1. And how are we supposed to form an alcohol? What we do is we get rid of one H. And in place of that H, we substitute OH. And therefore, the general formula of alcohol becomes CN, H, 2N plus 1 OH, where N is once again same, greater than or equal to 1. Let us take example of first member that is methane, CH4. We get rid of one H, what is left? CH3. And then we write down OH, so that is CH3, OH. So simple. So it's very easy to remember the names of the organic compounds if you know the principle of writing down the names of the new functional group and so on. If butane is C2H6, then Butanol, sorry, if ethane is C2H6, then ethanol is going to be 1H less C2H5 and OH. See, it is that simple. Propane is C3H8. So, propanol is going to be C3H7OH. Butane, C4H12, 10. And therefore, the butanol is going to be C4H9 and OH. But there are some other names of these alcohol substances. That is, methanol can also be called as methyl alcohol. Ethanol can be called as ethyl alcohol. Propanol can be called as propyl alcohol. 
whereas butanol can also be called as butyl alcohol. Let us try to understand in the same way the names of alkane with respect to that aldehydes with respect to that of alkane. Here also the letter E is to be substituted by the set of the letter AL. That means methane is going to become what? Methanol. Ethane will become ethanol. Propane is going to become propanol. Butane will become butanol. So simple to remember the name. The alcohols E was replaced by OL. The aldehydes E is replaced by AL. See, it's very easy to follow the principles if they are going by some law. And therefore, always follow the rules. And over here, we have the rule of replacing E by AL to get the name of respective aldehyde. You know that the general formula of alkane series is CnH2n plus 2. N is greater than or equal to 1. How do we prepare aldehyde? What we do is we get rid of whole CH3. That is, we get rid of C1 carbon and 3 hydrogen atoms. And whatever the thing is left, along with that, we write down CHO. That is what we would do. And therefore, the general form of aldehyde would become CnH2n plus 1. CHO, where N is greater than or equal to 0. See, the value of N can be 0 also. And therefore, methane, which is CH4, if we get rid of CH3, one carbon gone, so no carbon left. Three hydrogens gone out of four, so three gone, and because of that reason, one hydrogen left. And therefore, only H and CHO, that is methanol. Simple. Similarly, C2H6, ethane. Out of two carbons, one gone, so C. And out of six hydrogens, three gone, so three left, so CH3. And CHO. So, that is easy, isn't it? Propane, C3H8, becomes C2H5, CHO. And butane, C4H10, becomes C3H7, CHO. Here also, methanol, ethanol, propanol, and butanol have some other names. Methanol can only be called as formaldehyde. Ethanol is also known as acetaldehyde. Propanol is propionaldehyde, whereas butanol is butyraldehyde. So these are some of the other names of aldehyde group. Exactly the same way. Now we saw the alcohol group. Then we saw the aldehyde group. Now let us study about the new group, that is carboxylic acid group. Here also the letter E will be replaced by a phrase pike acid. That is methane is given is going to become how much? Methanoic acid. Ethane is going to become ethanoic acid. Propane, obviously propanoic acid. Butane is going to become butanoic acid. And how do we obtain carboxylic acid? The principle of aldehyde remains over here also. The general formula of alkane, from that we get rid of CH3. In aldehyde we used to substitute CHO. And over here we are going to substitute what? Obviously the carboxylic group that is COOH. And therefore, and the general formula of carboxylic acid group is going to become CnH2n plus 1 COOH. Where once again n can be greater than or equal to 0. So if n is 0, you know that what would be the formula that we get. First of all for methane, CH3 is to be removed. Only H left. And that will give us HCOOH. Same way ethane is C2H6. CH3 gone. So CH3 left, left. And that is CH3 COOH. Propane is C3H8. CH3 gone. C2H5. COOH. Same way butane is C4H10. CH3 gone. So C3H7 and COOH. Once again, the different names for methanoic acid, ethanoic acid, but propanoic acid, and butanoic acid. That is formic acid, acetic acid, propionic acid, and butyric acid. Let me tell you that if the acetic acid is very diluted, only 4 to 5 percentage of acetic acid, 4 to 6 percentage of acetic acid, then that will be called as vinegar. We will study that little bit later on. Same way now alkane with ketone group. 
Here the word E, that is the letter E, will be replaced by O-N-E. It is not one, but it is on. There is no member for methane. Ketone group does not have any member in, uh, corresponding to methane. Similarly, there is no member of ketone group corresponding to ethane. So you cannot have methane on or ethane on. That is not possible. The ketone group starts with the first member of the ketone group will have three carbon atoms. That means propane will be called as propane on. Butane will be called as butane on. And how do we form that formula? We know the general formula of alkane and from that H2 is to be removed. And O is to be added in place of that particular H2. So Cn, H2n and O, that is the general formula where N is greater than or equal to 3. Methane and ethane will not have any members of ketone for methane and ethane. But for propane, CH3, CH2, CH3, that is the general formula for propane. And in that, the white colored H2 is removed and in place of that O is added and that gives us CH3, CO, CH3. And that is what? That is the first member propane on of ketone group. Same way for butane, that is going to be C3, CH2, CH2, CH3. And that is going to be CH3, CO, CH2, CH3. And that is going to be butane on. And once again over here, we have the common names or the other names of the ketone group. Propanone can be called as acetone. Whereas butanone can be called as methyl, ethyl, ketone. So that is how we remember ketone group. So in order to obtain alkyl group, from alkane we get rid of H. That is how we got up alkyl group. In order to obtain alcohol, what do we do? We carry out. So in alkyl group we come to know that we just have to get rid of one hydrogen from alkane. And what we get is alkyl. In alcohol group, we know that we have to get rid of 1H and in place of that, we need to substitute OH and what we get is an alcohol. Obviously, the letter E will be replaced by the phrase OL. So, that is how we obtain alcohol. In case of aldehyde, we get rid of CH3 from alkane and whatever the thing is left, we write down along with that CHO. Obviously, the letter E is replaced by a L in order to obtain the respective name of aldehyde. In order to obtain the carboxylic acid, the principle of naming and obtaining the formula remains same as that of aldehyde. Get rid of CH3 in order to write down the formula and write down COOH along with whatever the thing is left out. Letter E is replaced by oic acid. In case of ketone group, what do we do? We get rid of one of the H2s from the propanone, propane, butane and so on. Because we don't have any uh, respective ketone for methane and ethane. And letter E is replaced by O and E. That removed H2 in place of that we write down O. And that is how we obtain respective ketone.